Good morning. My name is Joran Boll. We're sitting here in my yoga studio in Stockholm, Sweden. I've been working full time with yoga for 25 years now. I have um, introduced yoga into the corporate world, in academia and in the medical community. I'm constantly introducing yoga to new groups of people. Since 1998, I've also participated in a lot of scientific research on yoga. And 10 years ago, through the aid of all that research, I managed to get my yoga programs into the Swedish national health system. And today, some 20% of all hospitals and clinics, all NH, NHS units in Sweden, have in-house instructors offering yoga to a wide variety of patient groups. Today, I will take you through the most investigated, the most researched yoga sequence in Sweden. It's four basic exercises. You can do them sitting on your chair. This exercise have been tested on a wide variety of groups, patients with various kinds of heart problems, atrial fibrillation, heart attacks, heart failure. It's been tested on teenagers with autism spectrum diagnosis, people with insomnia, anxiety, depression. And in all these instances, the yoga has shown significant results when tested. In order for you to be able to do this set, these four exercises, there are a few things that we need to go through before we start. We are going to do four exercises. Each exercise are slightly different, although they're all done sitting on your chair. And each exercise consists of five basic components that you are going to do. <clears throat> we have the physical part, we have the mental components, and we have something in between joining those two parts together. The physical part is the posture. In this case, sitting on your chair. And on that chair, you're going to do some gentle twisting and turning with your upper body. That's the physical part. The mental components are, we keep our eyes closed. And underneath your closed eyelids, you focus on a point right between your eyebrows. We call it the third eye point. And inside there, instead of listening to all the chit chat that goes on, you try to focus your mind, you take control over your thinking using a basic mantra. You can either use the English mantra, I am, or the classic Kundalini Yoga mantra, Sat Nam. And what you do is that you connect the mantra to your own breathing. So you inhale I, you exhale am, or you inhale Sat and you exhale Nam. So the physical, the mental, and the centerpiece here is yogic breathing. Breathing is physical, oxygenates your body, and it's mental, it relaxes you when you do long, deep breathing. And those five components together create the yoga exercise. And I'm now going to demonstrate to you how extremely efficient yogic breathing can be. And in order for you to get this, we need to create a baseline inside of you. So you have something to compare with when we do the yogic breathing. So if you sit up straight on your chair and just close your eyes, listen to experience your own breathing. And for one minute now, count your breaths. I will tell you when the minute starts and when it stops. And for 60 seconds, you count how many natural breaths your body takes when you're not doing anything about it, just observing it. 
and one breathing, one breath is both the inhale and the exhale. That's one. And you can start counting your breaths now. I will tell you when the minute is up. There, that's one minute. Remember how many breaths you had, five, 10, 15, 20. Just remember the number. And now I will teach you the long, deep yogic breath. So place one hand on your stomach, cover your belly button. Place the other hand high up in your chest. Feel the thumb and forefinger touching the clavicular bones just beneath your throat. And with your eyes closed, just experience what is happening underneath your hands as you are breathing. Does your stomach go out when you inhale or do you pull the stomach in when you inhale? And is anything happening in your upper chest as you breathe? The yogic breath, we use both the stomach and the chest. So next time when you inhale, do it through the nose and push the stomach out. And when you exhale, let the stomach go back in again. And next time when you inhale, stomach goes out, continue, fill your lungs and expand the chest. Fill the lungs all the way up to the top. And when you exhale through the nose, chest goes down, stomach goes back in again. After exhalation, relax for a few seconds. Wait until the body itself says, now I would like to breathe again. And then you start inhaling. Stomach goes out, chest lifts, expands. When it's full, relax. Exhale, chest goes down, stomach goes back in again. Relax for a few seconds and start over inhaling again. Now, if you do that a few times, let's count again. I will tell you when the minute starts and when it stops and you count how many breaths does your body want to take when you do this type of breathing. And you can start counting now. I'll tell you when the minute is up. There, that's one minute. Now compare the, the two counts, the first breathing and the second breathing. And notice if there was any change. Normally it is. If you look in a medical textbook, they say normal breathing while resting for an adult is 12 to 14. Sometimes they say 12 to 16 breaths per minute. 
normal breathing when doing yoga is two to four, maybe five breaths per minute. This type of breathing you will do all through these four exercises. And you will connect the breath with your movement. So when you move forward, you inhale. When you move backwards, you in exhale. When you turn left, you inhale. When you turn right, you exhale. I will guide you through it. Now you are ready. I will guide you through these exercises. And my friend Marlin here will take my place on this seat and she will show you the exercises. So sit straight and keep your eyes closed for as much as possible. If you don't understand the verbal instruction, then you can open one eye and look at the screen. And then when you see how it's done, close your eye again and continue doing the exercise with your eyes closed and your focus inside through that point in your forehead. Okay, sit up straight. Close your eyes. Make sure you're sitting comfortably. Relax the shoulders, keep your head centered on top, relax the jaw muscles. And take a few long deep breaths. And just experience what it's like inside of you before we start. So you have something to compare with in about 20 minutes when we're done. The first exercise is the spine flex. Now move forward on the seat of your chair all the way out so that you're sitting on the edge of it. Grab hold of your kneecaps and don't let go of them. Spine straight, head centered. In this position, tilt your pelvis back so that you arch the spine back towards the back of the chair and holding on to your knees you will feel the shoulders and the shoulder blades pulled apart from that position roll back to where you started and keep on lifting your chest pushing the lower back forward keeping your head straight and you will feel the arch the other way in the spine and now you move slowly back and forth like this and you connect the breathing with the movement so you inhale going forward and you exhale going back and the mantra follows the breathing and the movement so you inhale sat or i and you exhale nam or am depending on the mantra you choose Slowly, gently. Yoga can be sternness, trying, but there should never be any pain while doing yoga. No sharp pain. So be very gentle with yourself. This yoga sequence will have its effect anyway. few more times back and forth. In just a short while, we will end this exercise with something called the root lock. If you have your period today, or if you're pregnant, don't do the root lock, just relax. But now stop in the middle with your spine straight, inhale there, exhale, hold your breath out and tighten the
the pelvic floor, anal sphincter, tighten around the urinary and pull the stomach in and create an upward movement inside of your body without lifting your shoulders or grinding your teeth. Now relax the muscles and inhale and exhale. Move back on the chair again so you're sitting comfortably. Take a few long deep breaths and just experience the first exercise, what it did to you, how it felt. This is a very good exercise for the spine. It's been tested in two spine studies in Sweden. Very good, clear results. Now for the second exercise. Sitting up straight on your chair, put your hands on top of your shoulders, fingers down in front, thumbs down the back, the elbows to the sides in level with your shoulders. And in this position, slowly turn your body to the left. As far as you can, maintain the straight line between your elbows. Head just follows passively the body's movement. Don't try to turn your head towards the shoulders. And then you go back forward and all the way over to the right. Inhale going left, so all the way over to the left, inhale, 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 inhale. And then exhale all the way back over to the right again. On the inhale, expand your stomach. And on the exhale, let the stomach go back in again. And don't forget the mantra in rhythm with your breathing and the movement. Slowly, gently, see how far you can come to each side. This is very good for the spine as well as for the breathing apparatus. It actually massages the heart. And as I said, it's been tested on people who suffered from heart attacks, atrial fibrillation and heart failure. It's very good for the heart. Next time you come up in front, forward, stop there, inhale, exhale with your arms still up there and with empty lungs, do another root lock, tighten the pelvic floor, the urinary, pull in the navel, Hold the position without raising your shoulders. Relax first, inhale, exhale. The arms go out in a big circle all the way down and roll your shoulders seven or eight times. Big circles, stretch and relax. And sit back on the chair, hands on your thighs or in your lap. Spine straight, eyes closed. Do some long, deep breathing and just experience how it feels halfway through this set. The third exercise, same position as the last exercise, hands on top of your shoulders, but this time we are bending sideways. So lower your left elbow, raise your right elbow and turn sideways with your head as well as deep down as you can without falling off your chair. And then back up again, same thing down, on the right side. And when you come down to that side, the last thing you do is 
raise the left elbow as high up towards the ceiling as it's possible. So you stretch the rib cage along the outside of it. And then back down over to the right side again. Left side. You inhale going left, you exhale going right. Slow movements, make sure there are no pain. Be very gentle with yourself. And don't forget to use the stomach. When you inhale going left, push the stomach out. And when you exhale going right, pull the stomach back in again. The mantra constantly in rhythm with your breathing and your movement. This moves the spine in a new direction. The first exercise, we flex the spine back and forth. The second exercise, we twisted it and now we're bending it. So you actually move your spine in six different directions in these three gentle exercises. It's very good for the spine. It's very good for circulation along and inside the spine. And you're stretching your breathing muscles. You're also massaging your inner organs in your abdomen. It's very good for movability, flexibility in your upper body. Next time you come up in the middle, stop there. Hold your arms in position. Inhale, exhale, hold the breath out and do another root lock, the last one. Tighten the pelvic floor, urinary, pull in the navel, push upwards, hold without grinding your teeth. Relax, inhale, arms in a big circle all the way out, down to the side. Roll your shoulders seven or eight times. And sit back on the chair so you're sitting comfortably with your spine straight, eyes closed. Take a few long deep breaths before we go into the last exercise. All these effects that I'm telling you about that has been researched it's very good for your body. But from the yogic perspective, those are all side effects. The yogic purpose when doing what we're doing is listening within, opening up to what's happening inside of us, listening deeper, going beneath, behind the mind, experiencing something deeper inside of ourselves. The aim of all forms of traditional yoga is consciousness. And this is what these four basic exercises are all about. Creating balance, increasing consciousness. And you do that by closing your eyes, listening within, using the mantra, to still the mind so you can take a step, step forward, step deeper, going inside yourself. Now, for the last exercise, we're going to work with our neck and our jaws. The neck is a very sensitive part of the body. Be very careful, there must be no pain. So be very slow with small movements and be very gentle with yourself. What we're going to do here is called the neck roll. Imagine you have a small piece of chalk or a pen sticking out of your chin. Take that and draw a small circle in front of you clockwise. Just follow the digits all around very slowly, very gently. The size of a tennis ball, small circle. Should take you about 10 seconds to complete one circle. 
And naturally we are connecting breathing with this movement. So if you take the circle, you inhale in the upper half of it and you exhale in the lower half of it, always through the nose. Inhale, upper half, exhale, lower half. If that tennis ball feels okay, no pain, no problem with your neck, slowly but surely expand the circle, make it bigger as long as there is no pain, open up the circle, inhale in the upper half, exhale in the lower half. Now, one more thing. I said we're going to do this exercise, including the jaw muscles. Keep on breathing through the nose. But the next time you inhale in the upper half of the circle, open your mouth as wide as you can. Stretch the jaw muscles. And when you exhale in the lower half of the circle, just relax the jaw muscles. Let them hang down there. Next inhale, open your mouth even wider. Stretch the jaw muscle so you can feel it all the way up to your temples where the muscles are attached. And make sure there is no pain anywhere in your neck. This exercise, the neck roll, this is very good for relaxing, stretching and relaxing the muscles in your neck, in your throat and the jaw muscles. And this is an area where a lot of people create tension in themselves, lifting up the shoulders, grinding your teeth because it's tough out there. This is a very good exercise for deep relaxation. It also works on your thyroid. Massage is the thyroid gland. Next time when you come all the way down with your chin, change direction. <clears throat> and start moving the same type of circle breathing counterclockwise. Inhale in the upper half, exhale in the lower half. And still make sure there's no pain whatsoever in your neck. The only difference going this way is that you maybe could open your mouth even wider now that you stretch the muscles. This is an exercise that is very good for deep relaxation. It's not uncommon that you feel a heaviness in your body when doing it. Your mind relaxes. And there could even be some yawning here. And all these are aspects of a body going into deep relaxation. <clears throat> and one of the reasons for this is because of the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve starts in the brain stem and goes down through the neck and throat, connecting to the mouth. And it's part of the parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxation response. And when you do an exercise like this, you're stimulating the vagus nerve and your parasympathetic nervous system. So this is a very good exercise to do on the edge of your bed at night if you have problems going to sleep. You do this 25 laps in each direction, take you five minutes, and that will make it easier for you to go to sleep afterwards.
Next time you come all the way down, you do one more full circle. Deep inhale in the upper half, exhale in the lower half. And then you stop with your chin all the way down. And gently raise your head up again. Keep your eyes closed and take a few long, deep breaths. And just experience what these four exercises did to you. Now slowly come back to the room again and through the magic of modern technology, Marlin transformed into me again. I know she's prettier than I am, but you have to settle with me for the last few minutes. In conclusion, if you like this set, this sequence will be posted on YouTube so you can do it over and over again every day if you want to. Share it with your friends, share it with the world. And uh, it is tough out there. A lot of people have it very tough in these days. Medical personnel all over the world are doing a tremendous job helping people who are very ill today. And one organization, Doctors Without Borders, they work with the most vulnerable populations globally. So please consider donating to them and the important work they are doing. No amount is too small. You find them on the healthflix.online website. We will now, for a few minutes, see if there are any questions or comments. You can post them on your screen and I will read them out and answer them here. And you can also reach me afterwards through my website. That is listed on the HealthFlix website. So you can reach me through there if you have questions or anything else you want to contact me about afterwards. Let's see, we have one um, question here from Bernie saying, could these exercises be adapted for someone who is unable to sit, i.e. lying down? For someone who is unable to sit, there are other sequences. So Bernie, if you contact me, I will give you examples of exercises that you or the person you're referring to could be doing. Kate says she was doing a lot of yawning during the last exercise. Good for you. You, you went into deep relaxation. Uh, the website, could you please spell the website name please? Jane is asking. The health flicks or my website. I'll do them both. Healthflix, it's healthflix.online. My website 
is listed on the website. So if you click on my name, you'll find it, but it's uh, www.goran, B-O-L-L dot yoga, goranbol dot yoga. Wendy says, this helped me so much. Thank you so much. This felt like a breathing exercise and meditation all in one. Is that how it's supposed to be feeling? Uh, and that is true. When we do yoga like this, it's like a, a constant meditation. Joanne says, would this be suitable for my friend who is paralyzed from the waist down? Definitely. This is perfect for a person like that. Caroline says, with the circle rolls, do you close your mouth on the way down or do you use the deep breathing during this? When you inhale, you open your mouth actively. When you exhale, you just relax the jaws and they're like hanging down there. Like that. Cecilia, is some if someone, if someone has a stiff neck, how would you modify the fourth exercise? Doing very small circles, maybe just like the size of a penny. Start with a very, very small, small circle and then gradually expand as the neck allows it. Gracinela uh, Santos. I found it difficult to focus on the points between the eyebrows. May I focus on the nose tip? You could do that, but that creates another, another um, uh, effect in your body. When you focus on the upper uh, point, the third eye point, you create a small triangle with the, the tip pointing upwards. And when you focus on the tip of your nose, you create a, a triangle pointing downwards. And that is from a yogic energetic point of view, focusing on different parts of your chakra system. So it is better to focus on the, the third eye point as a general rule. Um, Deborah, you said there are five parts, physical, mental, mantra, yogic breath. You have the physical part, which is the posture. And the second one is movement in those postures. So twisting and turning, breathing, third eye focus, and the mantra. That's the fifth. Okay, that seems to be the questions for today. Let's see if we have another one. Yeah, here are a few more. If someone has a bilateral shoulder problems, is the shoulder exercise safe? The basic rule when you do yoga is that you do it as much as you can with your body and your problems or pains. So if I can do a big shoulder roll, maybe someone else do a very, very small shoulder roll. So you make sure there are no pain in your body and you don't do the exercise further deeper than your body is able to accept. Robert says, on the third exercise, I tended to inhale up back to neutral and exhaling both to the left and to the right. Is that incorrect way of doing it? Well, it's sort of halfway through where you're aiming. So you're aiming at inhaling, exhaling. And if you can't do that, you take an extra breath in the middle but you're aiming for one inhale, one exhale. 
Louise, during the neck roll, I became very hot, felt a little strange in my head and felt a bit sick to my stomach. Any idea what was going on? Um, there could be a number of things. Uh, uh, one of the basic things that happens most of the time is that people haven't drunk enough water. Uh, we have a lack of, of uh, uh, hydration. So that's the first thing to observe and to address. And uh, try it again with a very, with a much smaller circle and see if that feels better and make sure to drink water. Vanessa says, fantastic sequence, thank you very much. Will it help to remove deeply entrenched negative thoughts? The answer is yes, that's what yoga does. When you do things like this for yourself, you create this type of balance in your body and you use the mantra, the Satna mantra actually means I am true or truth is my identity. So you're saying something very nice to yourself about yourself. And then we have an anonymous question. Thank you very much for the sequence. What sort of criteria were used to see if there was patient benefits? Subjective improvement, objective markers, heart rate variability. Uh, actually, there are a number of studies published on this. So if you go into, it's actually in Swedish, but the Swedish website, mediyoga.se, mediyoga.se, and you check, the, you press on research. It's in Swedish, it's called forskning. You press that, you can access a number of published studies uh, where they have uh, examined this in various ways. With, uh, they have taken blood samples, they have taken saliva tests, they have uh, used questionnaires. They have the, many of them are randomized studies with control groups, so they're comparing it with controls. So it's very serious research. Annabelle. Please, could you advise if you are meant to breathe through your nose during the mouth opening exercise? Thank you for your wonderful class. Yes, even though you have your mouth open here, you're supposed to breathe through the nose. And if you have problems doing that, try small circles first, and then open your mouth wider and wider while breathing through the nose. Thank you, my best exercise, experience of yoga exercise, which has encouraged me to try again. It helps. Thank you. Very insightful. Where could we find the research paper? I just answered that question. And now we have one minute and one more question. Could you please repeat the name of the organization recommended to donate to Doctors Without Borders? You find the link on the HealthFlix website, www whealthflix.online and there you can click on Doctors Without Borders. Thank you very much for today. <laughs>